Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of us playing Kaiserreich and the Empire of Japan. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And yes, we did give up on China just so we could take out the southern portion of, well, America. And I guess Mexico right now too. We have our soldiers here. They're doing alright, but Japan uses motor companies. With the nation of turmoil, Japan has seen several American com motor companies operating there. Civil war has caused many of the companies to lose contract with their parent companies and they have been struggling to get parts for the assembly lines. This made it rather easy for the Japanese to seize control from them under the pretense of assistance. While it's clearly an illegal act, we're in no position to do anything more than send a strongly worded letter to them. Strongly worded indeed. Gain negative political power. Well, that sucks. As we're investing in heavy industry. We read all this last time. Now, we came to this one. Colonial incentives. In order to save our dying agrarian sector and further expand our economy, we certainly need to invest in colonial projects. The empire is Japan's future. So, uh, building slot. This all looks like in Korea. And there's Taiwan as well. Additional bu base building slot. Kwantung gets three air bases. It's not bad overall. Uh, F agency. Well, we're still fighting in America, unfortunately. So intensive pilot training. Japanese fighter pilot training is one of the most difficult in the world, but it's a way that way for very good reason. Our planes are fast. Our ground crew is skilled, and our commander is smart. But nothing is more important than the courage and talent of the individual pilots, which would be pretty good. Ooh, well, that seems pretty good too. Open new flight schools. Our aerial campaigns require not just a greater quality, but also quality of pilots. New schools should open to teach the recruits of the IJAAS. Not only to increase the number of air wings, but also to provide practical experience and understanding of aerial operations. Since war planning, uh, which I'm pretty sure I read this before, but knowing the trend of our enemy, gather intel on them, and understand where to strike is of the utmost importance, ever to land a knockout blow. Whether it be the plains of China or the jungles of Burma, understanding the importance of natural barriers will be the key to winning our wars. And we're still increasing our land reform as well here. The exploded or expanded version of the Land Reform Act will distribute land that exceeds the newly defined limits of individual ownership and give the landlords state bonds equal to the purchase price of their lost prosperity as or property as compensation. This will be a major step towards ending the rural poverty that has plagued our nation for generations, and then we can finish it if we want. We'll finish our land reform program and see what the results are. So we do this. Current land reform will get us the removal of la rampant Landlordism, which sucks for political power, consumer goods, and stability, love more national populism, and get a few more building slots. But I want to continue going on with this. Rent Control Act, which I think I read before, so. Um, rent Control Act will allow local authorities to implement rent controls and authorize prefecture governors to intervene in cases where the rent has been proven to be unreasonably high. Extensive land reform. Um, the most extensive version of the Land Reform Act gives extended powers to government officials to fight those who resist the reforms. And of course, this one, too, which we just read. Or did we just read this one? Um. Expanded version of the Land Reform Act will redistribute land that exceeds the newly defined limits of individu individual authority and give the landlord state bonds equal to the purchase price. So, it's compensation. Major structures towards ending rural property that has plagued the nation for generations. I can't think anymore, apparently, so it is what it is. My bad if I read that earlier. Um, other than that, we have no political power, and we're going to continue on getting ready to go to war with the good old uh, CSA. And here we have it. Our soldiers are only half equipped strength, um, uh, but the CSA soldiers are much worse off than us, so. The goal is to take as much of the West Coast as possible, get up to Canada, destroy Canada once th these guys are gone, because the federal government's doing very well, which is not good for us. Because at this point, I mean, the federal government's going to come for us no matter what, speaking in real life and, and, and in game. But, uh, so we'll beat them up as much as we can. Take as much as we can. Uh, if we could grab Texas, that'd be great for even more fuel and to deny the, uh, the federal government fuel as well. But, uh, like I said, there's no guarantee for any of this, so... Because right now, the German government exile exile, who we're fighting because they joined the Entente. Oh, they're actually almost dead. Okay, so we're basically not going to get anything here. No, that's not ideal. That's really not ideal. And, okay, oh, wow, that was fast. Well, follow Chicago. Um, can we at least take the coast? At the very least, let us take the coast. Please let us take the coast. 88. Ooh, can we get Idaho as well? Ooh, there's ooh, aluminum. Oh, but there's steel and mm, 127, 156. Uh, this would look really janky if we didn't take this. But fighting through here is going to be a giant pain in the butt because I want to avoid as many mountains as possible. So I want to take that. Yeah, that's going to look really god awful. Oh, we're one point away from that. You know what? If we can't, we'll take this one. Make it look slightly better. Well, that sucks. Is there anything else we can take at all? God, what are these states worth so much? Liberate? Pacific states change government? No, we're good. War, war reps. Huh. 
interesting. All right, well, there's that. This is really ugly now. This is better than I thought it would be, but the federal government will be coming for us soon anyways. And we're out of artillery at this point. We're actually doing better than I thought we would. Artillery, trucks, and support equipment. So we need way more support equipment. And artillery. And trucks. And we're making advanced sub holes, which are pretty decent. Go and do that. That's fine. Nice. That's fine. Get rid of you. Get up here. Do that. That'll be nice. As we've lost more convoys. Oh, okay. We're sinking quite a few enemy convoys. And we'd like to be able to naval invade through here, but we just don't have enough they have supremacy yet, so. Then the American Civil War. What does that effect have on the American dreams? So because of that mechanic, these guys should demobilize quite a few of their soldiers. We might be able to push into them. Of course, then again, we are also, once again, at war with the Canadians. Ooh. Not ideal. If we can move fast enough, though, move up there fast enough, we can take as much territory through here. As long as we get to the plains, that'll be fine. Hopefully. Oh god, this is not going to be good now, is it? Um, could be looking worse. At least we're positive on guns. Armor. Uh, art armor. Artillery's getting better. Trucks just went positive. That's good. Uh, go and grab Vancouver. Thank you very much. As we're sinking more convoys. And what else here? Land reform. Maybe do this one now. It'll look a little better for us, maybe. Not too much, no. Kind of sucks. So we're still waiting to invade through here. Our allies actually decided to come through here. Legation cities. Good job, legation cities. Keep it up. And oh, of course they would arrive already in Vancouver. That sucks. But hopefully they can't do very much through here. Iron Guard chiefs total control. Good job. Do that. Go around and break over those mountains, please, for the love of God. We got to go Canada as fast as we possibly can to take up the rest of the United States because they're they're just going to come and. Hammer us very harshly. Yeah, okay, good. They're demobilizing a little bit more, which is good. In terms of pilot training. So we've got all these to do. And then expand the Army Engineering Corps. Given the very terrain we'll be fighting in, combined with the often lacking infrastructure in Asia, uh, the creation of a specialized engineer corps would be a great boon to our forces. We'll put funds towards such a unit, of course. Yeah, I think I read, I think I read this one before as well. If you want to read about the refitting old ships, please go ahead too. Little Marin and the Sailor, the newest book on Japan's shelves. Our country's recent wars inspired many homecomers to express their experiences in art, one of them being the author of a romance novel of unprecedented sales numbers. The book bearing the title, Modern Chan to Kagon Kun, or Little Marin and the Sailor, tells the story of two childhood friends and their tragic love, a boy and a girl growing up close to each other, partaking in a seemingly unchanging life, however. Just when they finish high school, Japan is readying herself for war, and the boys call to join the Navy. The two uh, have to part from each other, Marin staying at home. Now that they're only separated, they notice their feelings to each other but struggle to express them in the few letters that they can exchange. Just when the war draws to a close and Marin yearns for one loved one's return, his letters stop coming. While the book does not represent the highest of Japanese literature, it gives an astonishing detail, insight about the daily lives of a farmer's daughter in rural Japan and that of the Japanese Navy Marine. The book is scheduled to be translated to German, English, and Russian. Tell me, how does it end? But right now, as you can see, we're in Canada and we're doing okay. Uh, we beat up the guys here already. And we're actually doing, honestly, better than I thought we would. Um, now, unfortunately, we're fighting both the Canadians and the French Republic up here, but this is what they deserve for um, not giving us Hawaii. So, we all deserve to die. So, we have the main army here. Um, I don't want you going up there. I want you to up out right here. And they're spreading into th three tiles. Once we get to these bigger tiles, we get to Toronto, Ottawa. It'll all be very good. Signal on production, it's almost 1942. We're going to go ahead and grab some more research speed because oh, why not? As we're doing colonial incentives. And we're at quite, quite a few of these. Um, retention and mobility would be bad. Change to the Imperial War College. The Army War College trains the very best of a country's officer corps. Originally inspired by the Prussian Staff College, its instructional techniques have hardly changed in 50 years. It's time this revered institution has been brought up to the modern standards. Expand the SNLF, as we have a cup of coffee here too. The special navy or naval landing forces, the marine forces of the Imperial Japanese Navy, will be crucial in the upcoming conflicts. Through their efforts, we can make landings on the Chinese coast and the East Indies alike. Also, off screen, we did get asked if we wanted the Insulindia nation to join us, but I figured, you know what? Once they're doing the Anton and all these people, um, we're going to invade them too. We could use them. Direct rule from Tokyo. 
So we're doing very, very well up here. Canadians, you made a giant mistake. We've killed off almost half a million of them. We've taken about 300,000 casualties in total, which sucks, but casualty ratio-wise, overall it's not bad. And I can't imagine Canada keeping this up. Um, they're slowly running out of manpower, which is fantastic. Good, good, good. Help him out. And we also grabbed this guy down here. 20% 20, 20 more artillery attack. Fan, freaking fantastic. Marines. We do have Marines. Um, Expeditionary units. Blood torch and corkscrew. Naval invasion capacity is not bad. Or you can disembark at any coastal province, which is cool. Get more breakthrough, which would be very good too. You might actually use these tracks. But you get more special forces attack. That's gener generic. I never choose this one. I'm going to choose this one. Another division, good. I think lost. Ooh, we lost two subs. That's not good. Not ideal. Level 5 is good. Because right now, I chose a tactic for us is protect tactical withdrawal. I mean, we should probably should have been offensive, but whatever. Alright, so we have to pause here just for a little bit. Reassess our lines and whatnot. You guys hold, it's fine. You guys hold as well. And let you guys get over the river if you possibly can. That'd be great. That'd be good. The council votes on Legation Navy. That commission has convened the council to vote on a special motion whether or not to allow the legation to cities a fleet of its own. With the world growing more polarized and war torn by the day, it's only natural that the isolated legation cities should look to their own defense. But can we afford to spare the cost of providing a ship for the fleet? That's fine. Improve the long lance. Torpedoes, while small, are extremely deadly, while able to sink even the mightiest battleship, as pathetic Russian Navy learned during the Battle of Tsushima. Our ships are much smaller than 30 years ago, so we should work to enlarge our own torpedoes. Which would be good. Which we were at this one earlier, um, I think. So. Spiritual mobilization, rumors are not simply one of the clash of bullets on the ground, sea or sky, but the builder did not give up. Whoever shall win a war, it will be because they have the strength to keep going, and the soldiers of the Empire should know that they are fighting for when they land the first decisive strike, an ideological indoctrination. What separates the Japanese soldier from that of the other countries? Is his fighting spirit and his total devotion to his country and divine emperor? His refusal to surrender so unlike his cowardly fellows? Is why Japan shall always triumph over its adversaries, for he has no fear of death, and shall always be victorious? And then we have uh, the Pacific defense zone. Japan's ability to protect, project power across the Pacific has never been as powerful as we'd like it to be, but with recent conflicts, we can ensure that control of the Pacific is in our hands. We can also defend from any incursions that threaten the home islands by heavily fortifying the naval bases in the ocean. And then the scrap and build program. Lower Navy is fast. Strength is measured more than just a tonnage. Many of our vessels are frankly out of date, cannot compete with modern warships. We should move to scrap these old ships and use to salvage constructive replacements fitted with the latest technology or latest in naval technology. And hopefully here we have the final push into, well, Canadian heartland, uh, but we're going to also finish the land reform program because we need the political power, consumer goods, and stability back. It's a miracle. Land reform has been an ongoing political issue, and we're not the first government to try and implement solutions, but where others failed, we've done what many thought was impossible. We completed what is being internationally recognized as one of the largest re land redistribution programs in history. 2.3 million he hectares of land have been distributed to farmers during this project on landlordism, as Japan knew it, no longer exists. Bonsai, bonsai, bonsai. Fantastic. Look at all that we get. Additional base building slots. Awesome. And we get slightly more political power because we have, uh, well, actually get quite a bit more political power. Wow, holy crap. We should have done that a long time ago, but I oh will. Anything else we can do in China or Southeast Asia? Um, we could expand the tungsten mines, but we still have this guy over here too. Air doctrine, land doctrine. Um, we're already done with the land doctrine though. Nuclear research speed might be actually really good to do. Or we could grab military high command. Carrier sort of efficiency is 20%. That's extremely good. Yeah, I might have to go with that guy next. But, you know, I'm tired of seeing this. Let's go to the Tungsten Mines again. Also, we're starting to lose subs because they actually have a Navy out here. And they're actually bombing our ship, which is not cool. So, but we still have this to finish off first. Hopefully, we can finish this off. Um, it's all green, as you can see, but, you know, it might never be enough for us. And so, once this is done, we'll take out the United States. And once the United States is done... Then we can come back and uh, <laughs> uh, deal with Asia. So it's taking us a while to get all the way back over here. 
and do what we need to. Still seeing some combos, which is great, still. You know what? I'm tired of losing ships here. Go somewhere else. But we are making plenty of subs, and these are actually decent subs, so. Oh, we're pushing into Ottawa. Not been quite too successful yet, but that's alright. Ottawa's definitely front on city at this point now. Because we don't have a lot of good supply, but, you know, it's unfortunate. That's why you, you, you have to give up Hawaii. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you hold on to Hawaii like this? Just to lose it, and we lost Ottawa. Let's go, and, or maybe we lose Ottawa. Good. So, Canada should can, like, give up soon. Hopefully. Because they're out of manpower. Can, Canada cannot find a two-front war. Lost a couple more subs, which is not good. I need to turn our navy around at some point. These guys are just hanging out here against the coast, trying to protect the convoys and whatnot. And, come on. Uh, where are they going to give up? That, this makes literally no sense. Let's have a look-see. 40,000. I have to go all the way in, then so be it. Can you, like, do your job? God, we got, like, literally no organization around here. Oh, once we get Montreal, maybe, perhaps? Hopefully. Hopefully. Ah, King Albert flees the Dominion. Good. With the situation in the Dominion of Canada growing more dire by the moment, King Albert and the royal family have fled along with the high ranking exiles of the Dominion of India, with the hope to find a safe harbor and launch some kind of resistance. <clears throat> uh, Canadian military leadership is meeting the French generals and hope to set up a new Entente Command of French Republic. There's no getting over the major blow, which is the loss of the Dominion of Canada. The king announced in radio address, but he urges loyal subjects to remain free that not all is lost yet. He can run, but he can't, but he can't hide. Canadian collapse. The situation in the Commonwealth of Canada growing more dire by the moment. The senior Canadian military leadership has fled the country and has transferred the base of operations to the French Republic. From there, they hope to resurrect their Entente resistance and perhaps even return, prove, provided that's possible. Even with within the uh, Commonwealth of Canada appears to have any hope, however, its return is imminent. No hope indeed. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, there we go. So we're going to do this off screen. Um, yeah, we could grab all that stuff, but we're definitely grabbing as much as we possibly can. And then get ready for America. A community key from Beijing. We have received word from Shanghai that the Chinese, now united under a single government for the first seven decades, wish to renegotiate the status of the legation cities. But plainly, they are demanding the immediate return of all our concessions in China. Many intellectuals would argue that the legation cities are echoes of a bygone age, but a few places in the world as profitable as Shanghai are strategically important. Our journals point the difficulty in holding such a small set of territories against a country as large as China, with its vast reserves of manpower, but gumbo diplomacy is yet to meet its match. Legation cities may attempt to defend themselves in one way or another, but should we decide to act, we must be prepared to do so uh, to the hilt. Negotiate an orderly withdrawal. Honestly, we're still trying to find it here. Oh, hello. When did the French get here? Well, that's not good. We gotta deal with the French, too. Um, but let's you know what's going on here. Uh, right now, we took out all these guys. We, for some reason, so we couldn't get Mexico. But we took all of Canada, which we gotta re-get. Which, I'm very surprised that there's not a way to negotiate and say, Hey, we're done with you. I don't want this war anymore. But you know what? That's what the Entente gets, I guess. Uh, but we did get the, the Netherlands, as well as Ireland. So, Yeah. This peace deal has been very weird as the Third International and the Russians are killing each other. And I'm saving... Oh, wow. That is a giant Ottoman Empire. Um, China. I'm going to let China have as much as possible because that's going to be like our final boss for this campaign. Um, so we'll make them big and strong. And they'll probably suffer a lot from it. Um, trying to defend them and whatnot. But that's the plan right now. As we are trying to finish off the Germans down here. I'm going to island hop quite a bit around here and there. Just so that we are ready to get, roll. Nepal's going to die because they're trying to do all that stuff down there. We're opening up new flight schools. Overall, it's not going too badly. Naval war games. Research has shown the usefulness of holding military simulations, not just in generally taking your officers, but for actually predicting the outcomes and, and efficacy of potential military operations. Conducting such simulations will be indispensable to develop war plans. Uh, Naval Aviation Department. Without the planes, or carriers are just metal boxes which can float. We must assure that our carriers will always be equipped with only the best planes pilots, the Zero. Thanks to our efforts of the Mitsubishi Aircraft Company, we've been able to design a new fighter that will serve our efforts both on the sea and the land. The Zero, as it is called, will be a cutting-edge carrier-based fighter. Destroyer development. Far from the origin of torpedo boat destroyers, modern destroyers have become the quintessential screening vessel, an indispensable tool in anti-sub warfare. Destroyer designs are only going to become bigger and faster, so we must keep pace. Diversify submodels. Whether for fleet-to-fleet -fleet combat, commerce trading, or even supply subs are an indispensable component of the fleet. With so many potential roles to play, we must diversify and produce a broad slate of different kinds of subs. 
crews and innovation efforts. For great battleships to fight effectively against opposing fleets, they must be properly escorted. Investing in the development of medium and light cruisers is primordial for the Navy to retain its supremacy over the Pacific and Leviathans of the Pacific. Despite the uh, coming of aircraft carriers, battleships remain the pride of the IJM. They're the biggest, toughest, and strongest warships afloat, and body in the might of the Japanese Empire. But even more technologically advanced battleships will be able to inflict decisive defeat upon any foe dare to challenge us and floating fortresses. Ever know that the naval aviation has become a decisive factor in na modern uh, naval warfare? Aircraft carriers are especially important for us, with the ability to project power across the growing Pacific Empire. Therefore, we must increase the number of carrier groups we can field, and then uh, rocket signs. Uh, rocket developments can, can not only provide us with rocket weaponry, but even then the scientists theorize that with rocket engines for high-speed travel and Rick and North. Rick and North is a code name for the soon-to-be-established key facility in our NIGO project, located in the Fukushima prefecture. The NIGO project is a top-secret endeavor in atomic research, aiming at separating uranium-235 by the thermal diffusion. The other facilities taking part in this project are the Tokyo Riken complex and in Konan, North in Korea, and targeted East Indies, or centuries of islands of East India, or the East Indies. I've told for Dutch colonial rulers its vast resources lining European pockets. This practice must end. We shall liberate the assets for the co prosperity sphere where they rightfully belong. But I'm going to end the episode here and we're going to continue working on pretty much everything else uh, for now. And keep working on the Pacific, keep working around, and basically saving China for the end. Um, and we'll make sure that Canada is doing all right too. And then we'll go to war with the United States because our army just isn't big enough. We just really do not have a big enough army yet. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do with Japan. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.